How does your research relate to members of the public? Well, of course, um, the real way this relates, I suppose, particularly, for example, our Alzheimer's research, but also we work a little bit in schizophrenia and other dementias as well, um, is that members of the public get this. And actually, Alzheimer's is a disease is this terrible threat that's sort of growing and growing and growing. It costs the economy vast amounts of money. Um, and the number of sufferers, there are over 20 million in the world now, probably within 30 years, it's predicted there'll be over 100 million people because actually scientists, medical scientists and other scientists and all the people who help them uh, do their research have actually done pretty good jobs in heart disease and cardiovascular disease and cancer. So people aren't being killed by the things that used to kill them anymore. You know, we can keep your cholesterol under control. We can, we can give you a pacemaker. We can do various things to stop your uh, heart giving up on you, which means you live longer. And of course, when you live longer, the things you get are the age-related dementias. So I think it is very rewarding to be working in a disease, one that is already afflicting a lot of people, but also a disease that is actually really predicted to become probably the re a really, really major problem in the future. I mean, it's, it's a big deal now, and it costs the economy, Alzheimer's disease alone, more than cancer and heart disease together already. There's a bit of a problem with the funding to some degree. If you actually look at how much disease dementia, or how much funding dementia research gets compared to some of those other areas, it really doesn't reflect how much of a financial problem it is to society. But we do begin to see the hints of things being done about that. So there is more money out there. So really, because we're trying to work on diseases and understand diseases that really afflict a lot of people, not just the people who get to Alzheimer's, of course, people who actually have to care for people who have Alzheimer's, again, it has a very, um, negative or difficult effects on their life and their well-being as well, um, we, we feel actually we are working on something that really is um, important for a lot of people. And of course, at the end, as neurophysiologists, we measure the electricity in your brain. And actually, that is how your brain works. So, you know, if you really want to know how something works uh, um, and then how something goes wrong, you're probably looking at the electrophysiology we think is a very good way of doing it because much like a computer, if those electrical circuits go wrong, clearly the brain will be going wrong, and we know the brain goes pretty wrong in Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. Of course, other things we know, of course, is that brain cells die away, and we need to, you know, as well as the circuits just not working normally, there are basically just circuit elements, if you want to call them that. The neurons are just dying away, and uh, for, we need to stop that death. Mm -hmm. But also, we probably need to put the circuits right, even once we've managed to stop the death. So there's a lot, a lot for us to do, and we need to uh, understand the disease in much more depth to be able to really just develop therapies, to have new ideas about how we target new therapies. And then, of course, you need other people like the drug companies to help develop those sorts of things. Because actually, what I'm not going to be able to do in my little lab here is make a pill and produce tons of it and do clinical trials. We need, we need the drug companies to do that as well, but we hope the sort of research we do gives them clues about what they should be making the pills for. And, you know, hopefully one day Alzheimer's disease won't, it won't exist. How can you describe your research to people unfamiliar with the electrophysiology field? Okay, so, well, I guess one place to start maybe is, of course, your brain is a computer. I mean, your brain is doing just incredible amounts of calculations all the time, just for you to be able to listen to me, watch this on your computer, have turn your computer on, type, and do whatever else you're doing at the same time. Your brain is just a remarkable, remarkable computer. And much like the computer that you may be watching this on, on your screen, it works by electricity. So, and it works through electrical uh, voltage changes and current flows within massive interconnected circuits. There are something like um, 100 million neurons in the brain and each neuron has on average around a thousand synapses. So each one of those little connections um, is something which can change its properties and through all that plasticity, all those, uh, the electrical signaling can be modified, it can lay down memories. So it's an electrical machine, the brain, and what a neurophysiologist like myself does is we measure that electricity. So to be able to understand how the brain's working, we measure those small electrical changes and we can measure them at the level of individual neurons. We can measure them at the level of how networks of neurons are all working together in a team to produce certain sorts of activity. And that's the sort of thing maybe the public are most commonly used to seeing at the sort of EEG thing where you put just electrodes on the scalp and you can pick up indications of the electricity that's happening within the brain. But we can also even go way down below the level of recording the electrical change in one neuron. We can understand the electrical changes that are happening at one synapse, right down to studying how single molecules work electrically. And these are the molecules that are involved in the end in generating those patterns of electricity throughout the entire brain, through to how whole networks of neurons are working together during tasks and presumably 
laying down memories or retrieving memories. Uh, so there are many, many aspects to what we do. But in the end, we are basically measuring the electrical changes that are really what is making the computational machine of your brain work. So I guess that's what we do. We, we kind of feel we are the most closely plugged in to really how the circuits of the brain are doing their job. Um, of course, we again need many other types of science and many other disciplines to help us understand it. We need anatomists to tell us how the brain wires up, which bit connects to which bit. Uh, we can probe that to some degree with electrophysiology and electrical measurements, but also it helps just to have a physical view of the wiring diagram, which you can get from anatomy. Geneticists can help us with molecular techniques change the properties of those circuits or introduce things into them to help us understand them. Biochemists can tell us what the proteins are that make up the electrical generating machines within the brain, within the circuits. So we need lots of scientists to do it. But of course, neurophysiologists think we're right at the front end because we're actually measuring those electrical changes that are really going on and really generating the computational power of the brain.